Most of the time, I don't like to do teachings on certain days because, A, I like to use the teachings for multiple days. <laughs> I'm not frugal, I'm cheap. <laughs> uh, now that we get the humor out of the way. Um, in studying my utmost, you know, we always try to examine ourselves, but sometimes just examining ourselves isn't enough. We have to compare it to some things that are done in the world, that are done by other people. And in this case, I have to, because it seems as though that evangelicalism in some ways has gone too far with this whole idea of you know, building a bridge to God you know, by using the cross to climb it like a ladder, lay it down like a bridge, or float on it like an ark. There are pictures and people talking about doing all these ridiculous things with the cross that Jesus died on. The cross that God chose by way of being the sacrificial means with which he would declare to the world was prophesied that if the Son of Man be lifted up, he would draw all men to himself. We lift up the cross. We don't lay the cross down. We lift up Jesus. We don't lay down the message. We declare that God died and rose again. We make sure that that is the message that we bring because that is why the days are chosen such as they are during Passover. Because Passover was a memorial that was written back to the time when the children of Israel dwelt in Egypt. And as they were dwelling in Egypt, the pharaohs that had come along after they had originally arrived forgot who they were. They began to oppress the people. They began to use them as strangers in a strange land. They began to take advantage of them because they were peace-loving people. They wouldn't defend themselves. They would go ahead and yield to those pharaohs that were over them. Much like what we are supposed to be as Christians today, the same is true, the same applies. Egypt was supposed to be a type or an allegory of the world and its ways, worshiping many gods, many ways, many economic systems. The prosperity of Egypt was Mizraim, and it's celebrated in Jewish culture that this was the place that was prosperous in the world, that you could be like the world if you stayed in Egypt. But God called them out of Egypt. God called them to set them free. It's not a story of being free from slavery. It's a story of being free from sin, from separation from God, because they cried out to God, and God did not hear them until he sent them a deliverer. And that was to be the type and the allegory and the metaphor and the picture of a tale that we would tell our children. That all of us, irregardless of Jew or Gentile, barbarian, Scythian, or free, would be able to declare how you could be free from sin just by looking at Passover. Because during Passover, Jesus was offered as the same Pesach lamb that was shed for the sins of the world. That his blood was taken and splattered, as it were, over the household. That his blood covers the life of the sinner. And when God looks down, he spares the person because he sees the blood. And when he looks at you and I, he sees his son. And so he spares us. So it was meant to be a very important tool with which to teach. But you see, it wasn't just about having the Passover meal, because that was done to remember what happened in Egypt and the bondage that they got through and how God had done the miracles. Because each one of us have those testimonies that we could say, look at what God has done. But there's one thing that's unique to any other religion in the, in the world. One thing that is completely different than any other great religious system, and that is the cross. No other person ever claimed to and said, I have come that I might die on the cross. That I was chosen for this reason. I look forward to doing this. This will restore the relationship of man with God. No other religion ever declared anything like that. No other religion would dare. Because the cross represented to people who do not understand it the biggest failure of a religious leader. Because he died. And supposed that that was the end of it. But you see, three days later, he rose again. As he said he would. But what he demonstrated and what he did on the cross was that he presented the opportunity for man to be able to communicate now to God freely. Man could now discover God for himself. 
There was a means and an opportunity for man to no longer be separated from the God who created the world and the universe, but now man could find salvation. It wasn't just about seeing Jesus and declaring that his message was a good message and that you could follow his words you know, and do the things that he said and that would be enough. No, it was that it opened up the avenue with which you could talk to and have relationship with God, the Father, the creator of the universe. So Jesus made that obvious declaration by everything he did on the cross, in the cross, and through the cross. So don't let anyone take something as important as standing that cross up and dying on it when Jesus said to all of his followers if any man come after me let him deny himself take up his cross and follow me and Paul said I am crucified with Christ nevertheless I live yet not I but Christ liveth in me the life that I now live in the flesh I live by the will of the Son of God who died for me and gave himself for me in other words I am denying myself I am always putting myself on the cross to give up my will for his will when you lay down a cross on the ground and then start walking on it, you start trampling again the work of God in your life. You start cheapening the realization of grace and mercy. So when I see it the way that people are portraying it now, I realize what they're doing. But do they? They don't understand what it costs God in order to give salvation to the entire world. It cost His Son. It cost deicide when man killed God, literally because Jesus died. The Son of Man physically died because he was separated from God. How long? We don't know. Don't really know. We know where he went. We know what he did because he said so. But we don't know how long the Son of God was separated from the Father because he became sin and God could not look on sin. So at some moment in time, like most people teach, it wasn't that Jesus gave up the ghost and left, you know, or things like that, or died because he was pierced. But some people say he died of a broken heart because at that moment, when he no longer had fellowship with his father, it broke his heart when he cried out, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? Because at that moment, he was forsaken. Because the scripture proved that any man that was hung on a cross would be forsaken of God. They would be accursed. And he was in that moment when he became sin of the world, when he became your sin and my sin. So when I see a cross laying on the ground, I don't see it as accomplishing the purpose God designed it for. I see it as man trampling the foot that which God has done. He died that I might live. Don't cheapen what's been done. Don't tear down what God has done. There's a reason why Christians celebrate Good Friday, even though it should have been like Wednesday. <laughs> No offense to those that are kind of like, you know, all mixed up, or Thursday even, you know, if you want to look at it from two different ways of perspective, Jewish, Christian. But the point is, is that even though it didn't happen on Friday, and we know that, that's kind of obvious, because it was three days and three nights, you know, in the center of the earth, Jesus died and went down. But though it didn't happen on Friday, we celebrated that day, but we recognize what we're looking at. Jesus dying on the cross. Jesus on the cross the cross standing up. Recognize what he did for you. Treat it as a very important consequence of what we had done to the world, through Adam, but then also through our own sinfulness, through what we do daily, through what we still do today, even though we are saved and we've been forgiven by mercy and grace, and that God is still extending his mercy at this time until he brings that moment where he will pour out his wrath upon the earth. Remember, it's because of the cross that Jesus died. It's because of the cross Jesus lived. It's because of the cross Jesus came. Because he said, I look forward to doing this. Now he did ask God, because he knew what it would cost himself personally. If there be any other way, then let this come past for me. Let this opportunity pass to some other way. If there's any other way at all that we can do this and accomplish it. And there wasn't. So he died. He suffered. He died. And people add the part that he rose again too quickly. He suffered and he died. Just like you need to. Because we all need to put ourselves on that cross. The collision of God and sin. Who his own self bore our sins in his own body on the tree. 1 Peter 2.24 
The cross of Jesus is the revelation of God's judgment on sin. Never tolerate the idea of martyrdom about the cross of Jesus Christ or what Jesus did. He wasn't a martyr. The cross was a superb triumph in which the foundation of hell was shaken. There is nothing more certain in time or eternity than what Jesus Christ did on the cross. He switched the whole of the human race back into a right relationship with God. He made redemption the basis of human life. That is, he made a way for every son of man to get into communion with God. The cross did not happen to Jesus. He came on purpose for it. He chose to come that he might die on it. He is the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. The whole meaning of the Incarnation is the cross. Beware of separating God manifest in the flesh from the Son becoming sin. Jesus became your sin. The Incarnation was for the purpose of redemption. That's why He came. God became incarnate for the purpose of putting away sin, to eliminate it permanently not for the purpose of self-realization, not for the purpose of determining your salvation, but to eliminate that sinful nature that you have, that you would have a new nature fashioned unto the likeness of the Son of God. The cross is the center of time and of eternity, the answer to the enigmas of both. The cross is not the cross of a man, but the cross of God himself. And the cross of God can never be realized in human experience. The cross of God can never be realized in... The cross of God is the exhibition of the nature of God. The gateway whereby any individual of the human race can enter into union with God. When we get to the cross, we do not go through it. We abide in the life to which the cross is the gateway. The center of salvation is the cross of Jesus. And the reason it is so easy to obtain salvation is because it cost God so much. The cross is the point where God and sinful man merge with a crash and the way to life is opened. But the crash is on the heart of God for what it cost him personally. You were told by Jesus to deny yourself, take up your cross and follow him. Part of that realization knowing how to pick up your cross or to deny yourself is the understanding of what Jesus has done. Studying the cross is always a good thing. It makes you appreciate more the fact of what sin does and sin has done and sin still does to the world and to those around us. But the price that was paid covers our sin so that we can bring redemption to the place where it was meant to be that God would live with us again that we would live with God again in fellowship of His Spirit, in union with His love, that we would communicate the opportunity to see that Son of Man lifted up and all men drawn to Him for salvation, that should they look to Him, they would be saved. Even as the serpent was lifted up and all those that looked upon the serpent were saved from the bite of the serpents that were in the desert with Moses and the children of Israel as they were wandering and as God had sent them a plague of serpents and they were saved by looking to that serpent lifted up on a pole. Likewise, salvation has come to us by the lifting up of Jesus on the cross and dying for our sin. When you have a cross, just remember, lift up Jesus. Don't put down the cross. Take up your cross and follow him.